Hi, I'm here with Walter Fallis and Herman Brito, the two captains of the Trinity football team this year. Guys, you're both named co-captains this year. What exactly does that mean to you, and what do you have to do as captains to lead the team? Well, what being named captain, what that means to me, it means like I need to bring a lot of the tradition that I've seen since I've been here to this team. You know, I came here, first year I was here, Tyler Berry was played a similar position to me, and he was the captain, and the way he led the team really you know, exemplifies what I want to do and what me and Herman should do is to, you know, bring the camaraderie together and make plays on Saturday. So. Yeah, being a captain is definitely an honor, especially for um, to be that role model for the incoming freshmen to come in, um, teach them a few key points, and especially to continue that tradition that's been going on here at Trinity. Okay. Um, you were both named to the all NESCAC first team last season. What do you have to do this season to make sure you're on that team once again? Um, I think we just need to work as hard as we did last year. I mean, honestly, we came up a little short uh, week two last year, you know, but either way, we played it as hard as we possibly could every time we were on the field. So, and we practiced really hard too. So, you know, just got to keep that up. Um, I think with the all NESCACs, I, the most important thing we care about is really winning the NESCAC championship. Um, being an all-conference player really comes from the efforts of your team. Um, I know I personally wouldn't be an all-NESCAC player if it wasn't for the other D linemen or if it wasn't for um, the linebackers making plays. So. Good afternoon. I'm here with head coach of the Trinity football team, Jeff Devaney. Coach Devaney, I'd like to ask you a couple questions about how you feel about the upcoming season. First question is, you guys have been in preseason here for about a week. Yeah. How have you felt about the way the team has looked so far? And what are your concerns heading into the season? Well, I like the way the team came back from the summer. It's obvious that guys worked hard on their own. And that's uh, something that when, when you're at a, in a, at a place where the, the players are on their own for 18 weeks, you know, you, you've got to make sure you recruit some players who have that self-motivation and can, can compete on their own. And I think the guys came back in good shape. We've got some guys that look like they, they put on some good weight during the summer got stronger and faster. Uh, as far as the first six practices go, we had one We had one practice, I'm not very happy about the energy, but the other practices we've had very good energy. And uh, what I've told the guys is I think we have enough talent to win. So if they'll show up with the energy and enthusiasm every day, I think we'll be pretty good. Thank you. Uh, last season, you guys fell one game short of the NASCAD championship. Yeah. Your one loss being against Williams in week two. A lot of people, including yourself and a bunch of your players, have said that you guys felt you could have won that game. This year, you guys only lost about two or three starters on both sides of the ball combined. You feel great heading into the year. How do you keep that killer instinct from week to week in order to bring home that 8 no season? I think some of that comes from who you recruit. You recruit guys that are passionate about the, the process and not just about playing games. And I think here at Trinity, we have a lot of players who understand and enjoy the process of playing football. Playing football is not always enjoyable. Everybody likes to play on Saturday. There's so many unfun things that go into getting ready for that, and you got to find guys that enjoy those things, and we have a lot of guys that, that do that. So um, I think it helps that we have a history here, especially with the home game winning streak right now being at 39 games. Nobody wants to be part of the team that loses that, that home game win streak that goes back nine years with a lot of players. Um, so I think that fuels the fire a little bit. Obviously, the way this league is set up, you almost have to win a ball to win it. And, uh, you know, against Williams last year, we turned the ball over five times and gave up two passes of over 80 yards. Tough to win when you do that. If you take you take those turnovers away and the, and the two 80-yard passes, we played pretty well in that game. Um, and so that's where the feeling comes from the guys that they, they feel like, you know, that we, we, we really had a chance to win that game. But I don't think you hear too many people who lose a game who don't say, you know, we, could, we should have won that game. Quite honestly, we didn't deserve to win it the way we played, but I think we feel like if we play up to our ability, that we should be able to beat all of our opponents. All right. Thank you. Um, last season, about week five, you switched quarterbacks from a senior to a sophomore at the time. This year, you're heading into the season with Ryan Burgess's number one in your depth chart. Do you feel as though Burgess is ready to handle that full-time starter's role, and do you think that there will be any quarterback um, I don't want to say controversy, but are there guys below Burgess who have a chance to overtake him for the job? No question. I'll say, first of all, Ryan did a great job in those three games. And, uh, you know, Ryan made me, the way he played when we made that decision to switch from a senior to a sophomore 
if he had practiced like that up to that point, we would have made the decision a lot earlier. He actually went out there and did some things in those games that he played that he had not shown in practice. Um, number one is he was extremely composed. And, you know, his second start was the Amherst game. It doesn't get much bigger than playing Amherst at home with a home game win streak on the line. And he made some really big plays in the second half of the game where we're losing. Uh, and then in the Wesleyan game, we needed we actually needed him to, to win the game for us. Uh, we got, you know, we, we didn't play particularly well. We were kind of scrapping back and forth. And we needed to be able to throw the ball to win that game. And if I remember, I think he was 17 to 25. But we, had dropped, we dropped three or four balls. So, I mean, he could have easily been 21 or 22 or 25. So what he proved to me is that he can be in a big game and play very composed and be accurate. Um, but to answer the second part of your question, Headley Jennings, the sophomore from North Carolina, we, Headley played last year as a freshman, so he was mostly more like an athletic wildcat type kid that we used him for. He, he is a quarterback. It's just that we didn't use him other than just running with the ball last year. So it is a, you know, and Ryan knew this coming into this year. He wasn't, as you said, he was one on the depth chart. He knew, he, and in my mind, he's not one on the depth chart. He and Headley are kind of one and one A, and they're, they're splitting reps and they're battling. And we have some other kids in the program that are good players too, but those two have kind of emerged as the, you know, the front runners for the job. If we, you know, if we have to, if they're both playing well, that'd be great. We're just playing both because they both give you different, different things. Uh, if one of them clearly is playing better, then one of them would start. But I'd say if we were playing a game tomorrow, I think they would both play. And also last season, you had a breakout star and first-year running back Evan Bunker. You also had another first-year running back who was highly regarded, played well early in the season, and Ben Crick, who suffered a season-ending injury. How do you feel? I bet you're very excited about adding such a great running back like Crick to an already very dynamic rushing attack. I am, and I think you forgot about Dante Astimer because Don, when, when, when Ben Crick tore his ACL in the Williams game, Dante Astimer was the next back that went in. And Dante rushed eight times for 112 yards in the first half against Hamilton. And then he broke his leg on that eighth carry. And so then, then Bunker, you know, was like, all right, Bunker, here you go. Have the ball 40 times a game at that point. Uh, so I feel really, really good. And we as a staff feel really good about all three of those backs. And uh, hopefully they are all going to be healthy during the season. And not one of them is going to have to carry the ball 40 times a game. What we'd like to do is have the, the defense have no idea which one of them is getting the ball. And, like, you know, I'd like to see Bunker carry the ball 15 times and Crick carry the ball 15 times and Astimer carry the ball 15 times, and, and uh, hopefully we can do that. Another question. Last season, Walter Fallis had one of, one of the best, in terms of um, individual statistics, seasons in Trinity history. He's a second-team All-American this year. A lot of people view him as not just the best defensive player, but one of the best players in the NESCAC. What's it like having such a dynamic leader um, at the head of your defense, especially at such um, an important position that Walter plays? Boy, it's hard to explain. It makes it easy to sleep at night is what it does. I mean, it, it, uh, Walter is, is a tremendous football player. In the 11 years I've been coaching here, you can't tell me we've got a better football player than Walter Fowles. So I completely agree with you that people say he's the best football I think he's the best football player in the basketball. Probably shouldn't say that to him before he's going to play the senior year. But the thing about Walter is, I could say that to him, and he would it wouldn't he wouldn't bat an eye. He works so hard, studies so much film. He, he's he's what you want. He is a tremendously talented football player who works and works and works to get better all the time. And he does really well in school. He's just a really good person. All right, and last question here. Your goals for this season, obviously, uh, are is to go 8-0 for the NASCAC. I know you feel strong, uh, feel strongly about your ability to do that. Is there one or two games that really stand out to you on the schedule that really are your are your prime impediments? I mean, obviously, all the games are important, but there are other games that are bigger than the others. Are there any games you've you've picked out that are those so far? Well, I'm going to give you a pretty boring answer because we got to beat Colby first. You know, that's what every coach is going to say. But you know, historically, everybody gets excited about the Williams game. Everybody gets excited about the Amherst game. And the way the schedule falls this year, we have to play Tufts, Middlebury, and Amherst on the road. That's traditionally not been easy for Trinity. Trinity's never played well at Tufts or at Middlebury. And Amherst is always a, a, a tough opponent. Uh, that being said, I, I try to get our guys to not look at any opponent differently. We only get to play eight games. So we're going to play every game to the best of our ability. And I think if we play every game to the best of our ability and we're healthy, we're good enough to beat everybody we play. Thank you very much, Coach. Good luck this year. Appreciate it.